Hello everyone and welcome to another installment of The Persistent Rumor. I am Chocolate Yoda, spelled Y-O-D-D-A-H, because film studios are litigious. And with me as always is my heterosexual life mate, Chancleta. What it do, kangaroo? <laughs> trying, trying out something new? <laughs> Every day. Every day, brother. That's it. <laughs> I like that one. You're going to hit on something eventually. I know it. <laughs> Something's going to stick. You see what I'm saying? You just keep throwing shit at the wall and seeing what's going to stick. You know what I mean? Like, That'll I like be the it. next t-shirt. Yeah. Speaking of which, before we even get into this shit, I always promise that I'm going to acknowledge the new Patreon members. We have another member. Uh, I would love to welcome and thank Janine for supporting our efforts. Um, it's so important uh, for people to support the the uh, the broadcast, the podcast, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it. This is what will enable us to keep going and provide more content for you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Yo, I grew my eyebrows, J9. What's up, girl? <laughs> See that? Just thank. Just thank. I'm doing stuff for my peers, for my fans. You know what I'm saying? That's it. That's the persistent rumor. Nobody knows what the hell you're saying. <laughs> Neither do I. That's what's great. See, the thing, that's the great thing about um, the, the, the what we do here is just that, like, yes. if you see me laughing at a joke I made, it's just because I'm hearing it for the first time, You, the same time you are. Oh, word. Uh, yeah. I'm very, very familiar with that. So, um, what's on your mind, chum? Oh man, you know I haven't had much on my mind except work, man. I just, um, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a grateful man because like I get to work forty hours a week and cut out, and I got my check. I'm good to go, right? Like you know, every everything else that I do is about enjoying my life and and doing the things I love to do, uh, like this, right? Um, and I hear so many people talking about, man, I, I worked 72 hours this week. I worked 80 hours. I worked 100 hours. It's like, I, you know, and it's, to me, it's just like, you're not enjoying life, man. Like, you know, yeah. like, you know, and, and listen, some people have to do that. But too many people have to do. Yeah, that. some some many people have to do that. Some people work two, three jobs just to make ends meet. Um, but there are the people that, you know, that work 80, 100, 100 hours a week that, that don't really have to do that but do it because that's what they do. And it's just like, that's what you love. And it's like, all right, I guess. But, you know, like I have uncles who were workaholics like that. And it was just like, why aren't you enjoying your life? What's the purpose of having money and accumulating wealth if you're not going to enjoy it? Like, is it just the love of money? I never well, got that. I mean, when when you get into addictive behavior, that's, yeah, that's a whole nother story, obviously. Yeah, but, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I don't... Um, I don't live to work. Yeah, uh, I, I I work so I can pay my bills, and and these days, honestly, my only goal is to pay my bills so that I can keep doing the podcast. That's, That's it. it. That's all yeah. I care about, honestly. Um, I love what I'm doing. I love the support that we're getting. Um, I love the people that are agreeing to come on and. Uh, and join us and do the chocolate chat segments. Um, it, it's it, it's just amazing. Um, I, I I can't even really uh, find the words to express my gratitude adequately. So just understand that uh, you know we we are doing what we want to be doing. Um, you know we're we're working to pay the bills right now, but eventually we hope that the podcast can pay the bills for us so that we can just devote ourselves full time to this. Um, because, you know, despite the, the time consuming nature of all this stuff, mm. it's a blast. You yeah. know, we have a lot of fun doing it. I, I love speaking to interesting, intelligent people. Um, very soon, uh, there'll be a conversation that I had with my childhood friend. Uh, and he and I got separated because of racism. And he's going to tell that story, and it's uh, it's pretty amazing. Uh, there were aspects of the story that I didn't know until I spoke to him, uh, you know, on camera about it. So that was pretty cool, you know. And uh, you know, th that's that's the whole point of this man is to just keep having these great conversations and get to the point where that's all we need to do to make a living. And uh, we'll be straight. I mean, I'm happy now, but I'll be much happier when I don't have to work. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. Uh, you know, a job. I, I just want, I want podcasting to be my job. 
Yeah, no, I hear you, man. I mean, and and that's really what it is, and I think that's the appeal, right? Like just to get, to gain that perspective from someone else that you that you don't know. Uh, you know, um, I you know, perspective is reality, right? For 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 everyone. And so, you know, like when you get when you get into someone else's perspective, you learn things, you learn, you know, different uh, ideas, you, you get different, uh, you know, takes in life and, and, and how they're going and you can adapt them to your own life. Um, you know, and for us, it's just, you know, about, you know, having fun, uh, just a different, you know, just a different point of view from, you know, from everything from race, politics uh, to, you know, comedy whatever and it's all great and i you know i'm a big fan so i'm I'm glad i'm doing this with you man it's a great ride yeah yeah for yeah. real um i can think of no one better to do this podcast with uh this is you know you know we're best friends in real life so this is the deal and and uh, speaking of real life uh we had dinner uh uh when was it two days ago two days yeah. ago <laughs> i have no sense of in time anymore <laughs> it was, i just i actually had to think about that yeah yeah <laughs> uh two days ago and what made it uh special aside from you know the fact that we were getting to hang out face to face uh was that you met my lady for the first time so that was pretty cool she's a um, great person yeah. yeah yeah she really is i'm a lucky feller and um you know it's just to me uh all the things I've done in my life, um, and I've had a pretty spectacular life. Um, you've you've been witness to a good chunk of it. Um, I've I've done some amazing things, um, but the most fun, the most fulfilling times I ever have, is sitting around talking and laughing with my friends. Yeah, I mean, with my clothes on. But best time I have with my clothes on is sitting around <laughs> talking and laughing with my friends. Yeah. Um, but sincerely, that you know, it's it's the greatest thing to just be able to do that, uh, to be able to just tell stories, talk about whatever day, the day's events, uh, you know, whether it's politics, religion, sex, sexuality, relationships, all that stuff, all the stuff that we talk about on the podcast that that comes from our real life these are these are the real life conversations that uh, chancleta and i w would have with or without you but we are much happier having them with you of course so. but isn't that interesting see like like you know to focus more on the perspective thing it's like you know this is what you've chose to describe your life it's like oh, all these good moments that i've had and you know how great your life has been and all of this stuff and you certainly had your downs uh, but that's not what you focused on to like, you know, to, um, you know, to describe your life, right? You you focused yeah. on all of the great things that have happened um, yeah. and that keeps you happy, um, you know, and that's something that, you know, I sort of, uh, you know, picked up from you because that's that's really what it's it's about. It's about the, the meaning that you give to the things that happen to you right yeah. um and and you're a master at that. And it's been you know, it's been great to, to watch you, you know, just kind of uh, get out of your own way most of the time you know what i mean and it's uh and it's a beautiful thing because i i did spend a good chunk of time tripping over my own dick, so i get it yeah i hear you man <laughs> and, we all have, and and here's why here's why i uh i focus on the positives um the negatives are good to review so that you can understand so mm -hmm. that you can learn so that you can make distinctions to move forward right but dwelling on them is what makes people miserable right. right i know someone who is miserable all the time yeah and i and i once asked her um about eight or nine years ago i asked her specifically you know from my from my perspective the outside looking into your life your life seems pretty great you know, uh, you've got this, that, and the other thing. I listed out a bunch of stuff that, mm -hmm. you know, are, are things that most people say they want in life. And she right. had them. And she had them abundantly. And I, I said, I, I, you know, I just don't get why you're so unhappy all the time. And after a long conversation, what came out was what she does is thinks about all of the terrible things that happen in her life every day all day so you're just guaranteeing unhappiness yeah. right whereas my technique is to 
look at the experience, see what you made up about that experience, good, bad, or indifferent, and then figure out if what you made up about it is the absolute truth. Right. Or is there another way to look at it that could be more beneficial to you? You know, and this goes for everything in your life. If you're a rape victim, I can apply this technique to walk you through that and, and, and get you to the other side, having a different perspective and a different way to hold that in, in your mind so that it doesn't affect you. And right. people might think that sounds crazy, but it's true. And I, I've, I've seen it over and over and over again. People that uh, not only f uh, suffered uh, sexual assault, physical assault, uh, whether it's a bad car accident that left them half paralyzed, what, it doesn't matter what it is. Think of the worst thing in your life. I guarantee you, if you apply certain strategies, you can overcome that thing. Right. It's not going to affect you the way that it always has. Right. You know, because we get stuck in a loop sometimes. Yeah. Of, of just like, you know, picking on this emotional scab, essentially. You know, we know it's going to hurt, but we just can't help ourselves. We have to pick at it. Right. right? So, you know, I can show you ways around that, but um, that's what I do in my life. And I've, I've made so many distinctions because I've been focused on this for almost 34 years, just mm -hmm. daily, right. do, doing a daily practice. And when people go, come on, daily, yes, daily, forever, ever. Forever, forever, ever. Forever, ever. Ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, that's that's what I do every single day. Is is I e even if it's just one thing, one assumption that I have, one belief that I have, one distinction that I make, whatever it is, I I don't get to the end of the day without reviewing something and trying to figure out a way to make that better. Right. And you know, um, of course, I've had things happen to me in my life. I, I don't know a single person that hasn't. Right. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how big your house is, how many cars you drive, how many women you bang, whatever. Well, whatever metrics that people use to decide whether their life is good or bad, it doesn't matter how much of that stuff you have. If you're not managing your emotions, if you're not, if you're not examining your belief systems and seeing where your blind spots are and where your sticking points are. Um, if you're not creating new definitions for the meanings that you've given in the past, you're just going to get stuck. That's why very wealthy, very famous, very beloved people wind up killing themselves. Right. We've seen it over. It happens every single year. Mm -hmm. A handful of very, very famous, very, very wealthy and mostly beloved people, you know, wind up committing suicide. Or right. if it's not that extreme, then it's a slower kind of suicide where they where it's an emotional thing where they just can't be happy. You know, they just can't figure out how to be happy. Right. You know, and and I and and I'm sure it's frustrating for people because it's like, well, wait a second, I've got the house, I've got the car, I've got the money, I've got the love of strangers all over the world. Uh, you know, why can't I have a good relationship? You know, why can't I feel good about myself? Why why uh, don't my children talk to me? Why don't I have friends? You know what I yeah. mean? So it's just it, it's you know since the baseline assumption and understanding is that nobody's perfect, there's always going to be something going on in someone's life that if they don't address can be really, really detrimental for them. You know, so I, I don't envy wealthy people. I don't, I don't envy anybody. Right. I admire some people. I look well, at some people yeah. and go, wow, you know, there's a work ethic that they have and they've made smart decisions, whatever, but I would not trade places with any other human being on the planet because the moment you become someone else you got to take on all their right and it's there yeah and that's and that's really what it is right like you know um i've met so many people that 
you know, have, have gotten into a funk because they feel their life is inadequate and they base it on what they see in social media. They see everybody in their age group like, oh, they're, they're getting married or they're getting, you know, they're buying a house, they're buying, you know, and it's just like, why are you living on somebody else's time frame? Yeah. You know? Um, you don't know what they did to get to attain that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's like, like some people like look like they're living a lavish life and everything, but it's like you don't know the uh, the the insurmountable debt that they've gotten into to yeah. to achieve those things. And be, you know, that's not that's that's what they wanted to do. You, you know? can make millions and be broke. You can make millions yeah. and be in debt. People you do know? it all the time. Yeah, I've seen people like, you know, that that make tons of money and it's just like, yeah, well, they're just, you know, they're they're hand to mouth at a higher level. That's all it is. You know what I mean? Six degrees and, of separation. Exactly. And so, you know, and, and so if you don't learn the things that you need to do to manage your money, like when you when you have little, you're not going to do it when you have a lot. Right. So everything's a habit. Every, you know, everything is just practice what you're doing and, and you know what I mean? And then scale it. Um, I, I've met so many people that that have that are constantly worried about the bottom falling out of, you know, whatever good is happening. You know, it's just like, just live in the moment. Enjoy what's happening. Well, yeah, but th that comes from a belief system, right? Right. When when th when there's someone that is like, things are too good. It yeah. makes me uncomfortable when things are too good. Mm -hmm. There's usually a self-esteem belief system at work there. Right. Almost always. Um, yeah. It's something to the effect of, I don't deserve all these good things. Mm -hmm. I'm not a good enough person to deserve all the good things that are happening to me. That's, right. you know, and, and again, all that is, is, is either one or more belief systems at work, you know, probably formed by the time they were seven or 10 years old. Right. You know, you know, their maybe their mother yelled at them, and they were like, "Oh, I'm a bad child," or what? You know, pe people do that. People, people just make the these decisions that they don't know they're making. They're creating right. these definitions that they don't know they're creating, and suddenly, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty years later, they're still operating off of these decisions that a child made. Yeah, and never once going do i need to believe this do i want to believe this right is th right. What, what's the better belief yeah there's always a better belief what yeah. is it you know because I, I, I it's a phrase i use all the time and i'm going to use it again and people are going to get sick of it hopefully uh which is you're going to make it up about life anyway you might as well make shit up that works for you Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. as, as trite as that sounds, that's such a powerful tool. Yeah. You know, something happened. You decided you were a bad person because of that thing. You know, and it, and it wasn't even necessarily something you did. It could have been something that someone else did to you. Like, like I said, a parent. You want to know what's a worse word than like, or speak or kick or whip or any of that stuff is stupid. Yeah. That's a horrible word. Yeah. And very often parents program their children to have so low self-esteem because they 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 make the child believe that the child is stupid. Right. That they can't learn. I had this incident. Let's see. I was 19 18 or 19 something like that I was dating this chick and she had a, a, a niece that was I don't know I, I want to say like four or five around there and one day I'm, I'm helping her niece uh, learn how to tie her shoes okay so I'm like, okay, try this. And she tried a couple times, didn't make it. And I just kept, okay, let's try it to that, right? Um, and about the third time we were trying, the chick I was dating comes over and sees that I'm trying to teach her how to tie her shoelaces. And she goes, she can't figure that out. 
and the little girl goes, I can't figure this out. Right, yeah. It broke my f***ing heart. Yeah. Because I was like, why would you rob a child like that? Now, that might seem like a little incident. Yeah. But... But that stays that, in That it. incident took place 38 years ago, 38 or 37 years ago, something like that. Yeah. There's a chance that that little girl who's now a woman still carries that with her. Right. Imagine. Listen, that. I mean, think you know, all you have to do is think about a, a, an embarrassing moment that, you know, you, you may have had in like high school years ago, right? Like I, I remember... Uh, you know, for me specifically, and I've had many conversations with people where I brought this up, where I say, well, you know, what's the most embarrassing moment that you've had or, or something like that? And you, you think about something that happened in middle school or high school. Um, and it was like, oh, man, it was totally embarrassing. And, you know, you don't you never want to relive that. And, you know, um, and so these are things that sort of haunt you for your whole life and you never really let them go. Um, and those same things happen when you're a child, you know what I mean? You're called stupid. You don't want to be called stupid, um, you know, or you, or, or you, whatever, whatever it is that you, that, that, that made you feel terrible, you know, happened to you and, and you sort of recoil every time you think about that. Um, so it does affect you. And, you know, it's just that we decided at some point that it doesn't, <laughs> Um, if, if people are even aware of that, if you're even aware of it, right? Like, yeah. And so that really is what happens. It's a, it's a subconscious thing. You know, we're most not people aware. I speak to are not aware at all uh, about how the software works in, yeah. in their brain. You know, your brain's a computer and it has software. Yeah. And, and the software is installed over time. Mm -hmm. Starts when you're the day you're born and it keeps going. You, you have your formative years. Mm hmm. And that's where you're forming your beliefs about life. Right. That's the software. Yeah. And most people are completely ignorant to all of it. The code gets f***ed up sometimes, homie. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, you got to revise it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 So and, and people don't write new code. I think we've used the computer metaphor long enough anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this joke is run its course. <laughs> <laughs> but... You know, the point is, is that there's so much suffering that goes on uh, needlessly just because it's it's like someone who uh, has uh, depression. Yeah. And doesn't ever go talk to someone to get medication for it, uh, assuming that it's organic and, and you know, right. not mental, you know. And, and so that person is suffering needlessly yeah. just because there's a solution to their issue that they're not taking advantage of because they're, they're not willing to investigate it, mm -hmm. you know, or yeah. they might not even know there's anything to investigate, right. you know, um, you know, any, anytime I feel anything negative, man, I am on it right away. Yeah. <laughs> like I, yeah. I am, you know, what was I just thinking about what's going on, you know? So like I, I, I had this happen uh, earlier today um, and and all it was was that I had waited too long to eat. Okay. You know, I just had a, I just did a quick scan like, okay, w w why am I feeling so funky? And I was like, oh, fuck, it's been like five hours since I ate. Yeah. And look at me. Obviously, I don't skip meals, you know, so, <laughs> so I just was like, okay, time to fuel up. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, but what, what's great about that is that being aware of myself in real time, it enables me to be calm when I don't feel well. Because some people freak out. Oh my God, why am I feeling like this? What's going on? And then their anxiety gets worse and worse and worse. Right? It's, yeah. it's, it's a snowball effect, you know? So, you know, the fact that I'm aware and, and understand simple techniques and it's not it's not like I'm a genius these are these are really really simple techniques that I just have learned over 33 34 years so anyone can do them um it's just a question of you know what's what's the technique that's going to be best for you what's going to resonate with you uh you know how quickly do you learn things how committed are you to addressing this thing because you know there's a lot of people that just like to whine 
you know, and I and I tell people, I told you this recently, there was an issue that we were talking about. And I was like, all right, this is the last time that you get to talk about this before I tell you shut the fuck up. <laughs> right, right. Well, <laughs> and, that, you know, and, and, and I should I should kind of give a little bit more context to that. What I said was basically, you know, now that we've talked about this, uh, now that we've uh, talked about this X amount of times, if you don't start doing something about this, I'm not going to listen to you anymore about this. You know, but that's one of the things I brought up at the dinner, um, you know, the, the, how we became friends, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it was, it was my first experience with, um, somebody challenging my, you know, what I said, you know, um, whereas normally you would come home and, you know, like you're, you're having a, a problem with someone at work or something and you just start, oh, this dude at work whatever blah 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 you know happen and you tell half the story right like you tell your side of the story you tell your story uh it, you know in the perspective where you you want to make yourself out to be the hero right um and you know i i noticed that you listened to me but you listened uh with with the purpose of understanding not 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 the purpose of responding right um, and that was my first experience with that, where, you know, like all of a sudden you go, well, wait, what did you do? How did you get there? How did, you know, and you ask these questions that I'm just like, wow, I wasn't ready for follow-up questions. <laughs> uh, but because I wasn't ready for follow-up questions, right? Um, you know, I, 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 I couldn't make anything up on the spot. I just told you what happened, right? <laughs> right, right. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, you know, we workshop my, my thought process. Right. And then I'm like, okay, cool. I see. Okay. So yeah. So maybe I was in the wrong where most of the time when you start ranting and you start talking about someone, uh, you know, that you're upset with or whatever. Um, most people just go, yeah, f that dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's you know, no context. Words, just, son. Yeah. They're just rooting for you. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, and sometimes that feels good and sometimes you need that it's what it is, but it's not a productive conversation if somebody wants to be a friend. And so, um, that was something that I found so valuable in you. Uh, and, and, and we've kept that up, you know, uh, yeah. as long, you know, throughout our friendship. Um, and so I always feel great that, you know, like you're my confidant, you're somebody that I can go to my consigliere, you know? Um, that I'll I never can... say that word again because you butchered it. It's consigliere. Stop it. Oh, my God. Whatever My it Italian is, friends are killing themselves right now. <laughs> they'll, they'll be all right. Um, uh, you know, I'm Dominican. No, I feel, yeah. I feel the same way about you. I've, I've referred to you as my consigliere many times. Yeah. Um, so, I know yeah. Italians that call sauce gravy. You'll deal. I have to hear your uh, shit well, about, you know. the, the sauce is different than gravy. There's sauce and then there's gravy. There's sauce and then there's gravy, but they but there's people that call sauce gravy, and that's what I'm not Italians. I, 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 I've seen it happen. At They're any idiots. Rate, yeah, it's it's what it is. Um, but yeah, so uh, you know, at any rate, so I'm 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 sitting here going, you know, like wow, like you know, this is cool. Like I get to think about things and and be a little bit more introspective, and it's just like oh, let me. L let me, you know, let me, let me unleash more things, uh, to you. And as I done through the years, like I've been able to sort of just, uh, really, uh, be more productive and, and, and positive in my behavior and, and what I do. Um, but it, you know, I, and I think that's, that's the value in a, in a, in a honest, in a great friendship, just that somebody who's willing to sort of, you know, confront you and say, Hey, you know, that, that doesn't sound like a good thing to do. Uh, so let's talk a little bit more about that. Um, and when you listen with the intent to understand, uh, those are the results that you get, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I will put it to you like this. Um, if, if I have someone who I consider a friend who doesn't confront me when I'm saying dumb shit, they're useless to me. They're not a friend. They're an acquaintance. Because what is the point? What is the point of calling someone your friend and they're not helping you through your shit? If they're just going to be a yes man for you and you're not going to grow as a result, what's the point? Yeah, I hear you. You know, you know like I, you, you, when, when you say something to me and I hear where your blind spot is, if I don't reflect that back to you, I would feel like a piece of shit. <laughs> Yeah, no, you know, I hear you. and and if yeah. I'm when I talk to you about my, shit, 
you know, there have been times where you're like, well, wait a second, ba ba ba, and I go, oh, f yeah, yeah, you know, because it's a physician heal thyself kind of thing, man. I don't, I, I, I need a coach too. Yeah, well, so that's the thing. Sometimes we, you know, sometimes you just, yeah, it's hard, it's hard uh, to, to, you know, what's the, it, it's hard to look at certain things uh when you're inside the box like when you can't yeah, be I, the observed and the observer at the same time that's it that's yeah. that's it yeah nosy yeah no really you, you you can't you you know again you can work hard to be introspective and i encourage everyone to do that um only because it's been so phenomenal for me um but there's always going to be a blind spot you know, and that's okay. You know, that's that's why psychiatrists have psychiatrists. That's why coaches have coaches. Is right. because no matter how much I know and I've learned, if I am not humble enough to understand that that I might still have blind spots, then that arrogance is going to fuck me up. Right. Yeah. Precisely. But that's what it comes down to, man. And I think that you know. Um, it's just so important, you know, for us to not just grow as individuals, but really like progress as a species. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. really like just start being introspective and listening to yourself, you know, but it's yeah, harder. The species has a lot of growth <laughs> to do. Um, yeah. You know, uh, this is an unusual conversation for most people. Mm -hmm. um, I've had it's... many people. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I think not just unusual, but I think it's it's also uh, awkward for many people um, in terms that you know like people look at mental health in a, in a taboo sort of way. And but let's let's that... not even call it mental health because I'm not I'm not specifically referring to mental health. I'm really just talking about emotional well being. Emotional well being, yeah, right? true that. Yeah. So so for for a lot of people, it's a something that they don't even know about um b if they know about it like you alluded to they're not necessarily comfortable talking to other people about it because you know we're all living the instagram life it's just a question of to what degree right um instagram got popular because it it, it hacked into our brains um with a function that we love we we love to show people the best version even if that version is a lie we want to show like i you know people that stand in front of really expensive cars that they don't own because they understand the impression that that creates in other people you know so we're, we're all doing that to a certain extent or another um i'm doing it as little bit as humanly possible right. um but I know that I'm doing it. I know that, for instance, on Facebook, the people that think they know me absolutely do not know me. Right. You know, I seem effusive in what I share. I seem to give a lot of insight into myself. I don't. Right. I just, I just know how to present what I want to present in a way that guards me, uh, but still makes you feel like you're getting in a little bit right because i do want people to feel connected to me because i want to be connected to other people sure but i've got hundreds of people that are essentially strangers on that fucking site <laughs> right yeah you know yeah i'm not just gonna give up my shit to anybody yeah you know that's that's what you're for you know that's what my son is for now and again that's what my lady's for yeah you know i have a a, a, a wonderful handful of people in my life uh that i can turn to whenever there's anything on my mind and i can get the support that i need i yeah. don't need that from strangers so i'm not going to do that on uh, on facebook right you know the i'm not going to do that facebook 911 oh just up man and then like that's it that's the whole post so yeah, that people yeah. can come running oh what's wrong what's going on yeah. And I'm like, ah, eh, whatever, man. I mean, I get it, but Jesus, don't you have people in your life, man? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and sadly, some people don't, but, um, you know, they're, 
that kind of plays into the you know emotional well-being situation right where you have to go okay so what are you trying to achieve here are you trying to be manipulative are you trying to be uh you know are you being a drama queen because this is just how you've been doing things forever like you know let you know and some so, people just need validation man some people have you know there's, there's the does. hierarchy of needs right and people have them in different orders in terms of prioritization right um and for some reason for some people um being acknowledged and and validated is extremely important you know Listen, it, again it's important to everybody but it's a question of the degree priority. to which it's important because right. when it's too important when there's an unhealthy balance with that that's when you start standing in front of expensive cars that you don't own to try to get attention for that right you know and then and then you know you you're creating other problems because if you wind up getting praise for things that are not true, mm -hmm. you feel like a fraud. Right. And so now you got to live, you know, discreetly because you have to hide you're living the fact a, that a you're double a fraud. life. That's yeah. that's what a double life is when yeah. when your 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 reality is one thing, but you're pretending that it's something else. Right. And so, you know, that becomes a a slippery slope. Um, I, I, I realize that not everybody's life is amazing, but what we're saying is that it might just be your perspective. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, look, there's, I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, use the secret. You know, I know you live in the desert where there's no water, but use the secret, you know, like, yeah, shut up with that. Shit, you know, <laughs> <laughs> when, like, listen, I'm a, I'm a big believer of intention and and focus and drive and goal setting and all that other shit. Um, but let's not pretend that shit is magic, right? Okay, yeah. you know, there's some real hardcore shit that people are living through, through no fault of their own. You know, some people are born into poverty. Some people are born into war torn countries. Mm -hmm. What are you going to, you're just going to look at that person and go, oh, here, let me hand you a copy of the secret. You know, I mean, it won't do any harm to do that, but to just be like, oh, yeah, everything will be fine if you just read this. Well, maybe right. not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And also, you know, it, it, it's also like, um, there are certain things that you can give someone like a book for instance and uh they'll read it and they won't interpret it the same way you did right well, of course not yeah and as a result you know there it might not be as valuable to them as it is to you so you, it's not much use and so a lot of it is just really being um really starting with your emotions really starting with the meanings you give things really starting with the positivity and 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 understand how to weed out that negativity um there's it's a lot of it's a lot of work it's it, it really is i mean for me like you know when 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 yoda met me i, I was a shit i was a young kid who just you know what i mean like you were, I, I, you were 23 so you could be forgiven a little bit yeah and so you know i'm 23 and at that point it's just like i you know i'm i'm at the i was at the age where i thought i knew everything and now i'm 43 and i realize i don't know shit. I, <laughs> I i there's vastly more that i don't know than i do know and that's true yeah. for just about that's, every individual. That's everybody, man. Yeah. Everybody. But, you know, to your credit, and, you know, so I'll give you my perspective of, of meeting you. Yes, you were a goofy 23-year-old kid. There's no doubt about it. However, I found out immediately upon meeting you that you were open-minded and willing to be uncomfortable in confronting the things that you needed to confront about yourself. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, I don't pussyfoot around people. I don't care whether I've known you 10 years or 10 seconds. If I mm -hmm. see something, I'm saying something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've gotten very good at saying it in a way that doesn't offend people. You know, I don't just, Hey man, what you're saying is stupid. Like I don't do that, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, right. but I've, I've gotten uh, very clever about how I present things to people to give them an opportunity to take a different vantage point and, 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 and just go, oh, wow, you know, I, I've never looked at it that way before. I never thought of it that way before. Those, those words are magic to me. 
You know, I love I love hearing that. When I yeah. when I talk to someone and they go, I've never thought of that before. That's beautiful. I'm yeah. I'm I'm directly involved in contributing to that person in that moment, and I love that. Yeah. That's what I live for. So, you know, that's what I saw with you right away. Like if you were a typical cuz I'm 13 years older than you, right? So if you were a typical 23-year-old head we wouldn't be talking right now yeah yeah <laughs> you know uh because i left a lot of those people in the dust <laughs> yeah <laughs> and rightfully so <laughs> you know because listen i'm not i'm not going to try to uh coerce anybody yeah into improving their life um yeah. i will offer it up and those who want to take the challenge can take it and those who don't don't i don't judge either way but I do decide where I'm going to spend my f-ing time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's just, you it's know. valuable. It, you know, like that's it's the most that's valuable thing any of us that. have. That's right. We, listen, the, time is the one commodity we can't manufacture. Once it's gone, it's gone. That's so, right. you know, I don't waste my time uh, to, to whatever degree I can control, man. I do not waste my f-ing time i don't do it with friends i don't do it with uh chicks i date i don't waste my time yeah anybody who's negative and refuses to open their mind you know i'll give it a couple shots then after that it's like hey bon voyage man fairly well best wishes (laughs) you know and and listen and, and and i'm gonna say something about you right now and it's like you know a lot of people say things like oh i don't waste my time it's like no no uh, l- let me tell you something about yoda right now i've made plans with this man where i was late and i didn't call or anything this dude was out <laughs> right like you know like that's just it you know what i mean and, and then when we had a conversation about it it was just like hey listen you know like i if you're gonna be late just let me know this is what it is and whatever and so it, it was it was a lesson in learning how to respect people's time somebody's yeah, you, made, were, it, you were you f- were chronic with that <laughs> yeah, yeah and it was just something that like you know you've been doing for your whole life yeah right and when somebody's making plans with you that like you know they're they're taking their time you know there's certain i mean listen i'm not going to sit here and tell you that i'm punctual to everything I'm, I'm i'm not um but there are times when you know that somebody is you know taking their time out to to either help you or do certain things and it's like and the least you can do is respect their time yeah um yeah and, and, that, so, and that was in the context of work because you know i mean i take a more casual approach in in my real life right. um you know personal shit, i try to structure it so it doesn't matter the only time it matters is if there's something we're going to that has a time factor to it but right right if we're just like hanging out a hey, come around whatever time you know but yeah. yeah when it's a work thing yeah man respect my fucking time yeah absolutely you know like whether whether i'm here to help you or you're here to help me i don't care what the fuck it is man like we said 10 o'clock, like I, I give people 10 minutes, mm-hmm. um, uh, but uh, with, with technology now, there are very few times that you can't give someone a heads up if you're going right. to be late. Yeah. And if you're going to be late and you, uh, if you're late and you're not being respectful about it, I feel no need to be committed to our plans anymore. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> you know, and I bounce the out and by the way i do that when i'm selling shit to somebody yeah when i when i was in sales which i was for 36 years up until last year if we had a 10 a.m appointment and it was 10 10 i'd look at the receptionist and be like have you heard anything nope let them know we'll reschedule Whew. yeah and that's it it, 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 it's, it, and it works because at, you know, because then what happens is that it's like, now that person feels like either they owe you an apology or it's like, oh, this guy's serious. But either way, like you made hey, your I'm point. I'm a business man. Yeah. Right. And then all you of know, a sudden And if like, you're oh. going to do some fucking corporate leveraging bullshit that you read in fucking Art of War, suck my ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, don't come with, don't come at me with that. First of all, I've read everything you've read. <laughs> yeah. I've been doing this <laughs> longer, more than likely. Uh, you know, you bring in a f- 
knife to a gunfight. Don't don't try to get into some fucking mental sparring bull with me. Come on. Boom. Be yeah, I mean, I just because I, I know I know some people do that. They don't make them wait. It increases your value. Yeah. Come on, don't believe everything you read, yeah. man. And yeah. if that's the case, then you leaving also increases yours. So either way, yeah, you know, and um, it's and it's worked. It's worked many times. And and I don't do it as a tactic, by the way. Yeah. I don't do it to try to get that. I know that I might I might never hear from that motherfucker again. Right. I'm, I might have lost the opportunity for a sale, but I keep my self-respect and I give myself an opportunity to do something more productive. Right. Because, you know, a sales day is fucking hectic, man. Yeah. Shit is moving 100 miles an hour the whole fucking day from start to finish. Yeah. 8, 10, 12 hours a day. It is not for the fucking weak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is. It is not for the weak hearted. Um, it's a. It's a tough profession. It's, and there's it's a days tough where career. It's, yeah. It's a. It, there's days where there's nothing but rejection. You know what I mean. But you. You know. You. You wake up for the day that you get that. You get that W. You know what I mean. Yeah. So yeah, I hear you. And you know where where the the type of work that I did most of the time, if I didn't sell something, I didn't eat that day. Yeah. Exactly. You know. And. Um, I, I got real hardcore about that. Shit. <laughs> you know, Rightfully if you so. ain't if you ain't here for the shit, then I I gotta find something else to do. You know, yeah. I'm I'll go make phone calls. I'll go knock on doors. Whatever the fuck it is, I'll do a proposal that I have. You know, waiting. Whatever it is, I, I'll always find something else to do. My mm -hmm. whole world ain't hanging on your shit, bro. <laughs> totally get it, man. Absolutely, you know? that's the way. To and be. that's and and when I train sales, because you know, here's the funny thing: I've never said any of this thing that I've just said to you to anybody else that that I'm directing it toward. Mm -hmm. But I believe it's really important to have that internally, right? So that everyone knows it's authentic. And when I train salespeople, you saw me. You saw me train people at that uh, ISO uh, that that uh, that we were at after the job where we met yeah and you know i i i taught those guys to be fucking savages yeah. <laughs> and one woman actually it was a few guys and a woman mm -hmm. and i trained them to be fucking savage animals out yeah. on the streets and they went out there and did their thing man you know yeah. all of them got their first uh sale within two weeks which is what i promised the owners yeah. and they didn't believe me yeah. They were like, come on, man. It takes like a month or two, right. sometimes even three for people to get their, their, their first sale. What the fuck are you talking about? Right. And I was like, all right, well, if I'm wrong, you won't lose anything. Right. Right. But if yeah. I'm right, you have something to gain. Right. So let me do this thing my way. I'll train these people for you. You know, of course, I got compensated for that, but my i i the proof is in the pudding as, that, as that's what it comes know, down to the old saying so yeah i made it happen and and you know you've got it you know and and that approach is not just about sales to me i take that approach to every aspect of my life yeah you know and not and this is not about bulldozing people or intimidating anybody or there's nothing negative about it it's just an internal standard that you keep for yourself that gets communicated through your energy when you're talking to people so that people know yeah. that you're not a person who is dishonest so that people know that you're a man of your word right so that people know that your time is not to be fucking wasted right you know you give and it's all just energy man it's all in how you carry yourself that's right yeah you know and Again, it works for me. That's all I know. <laughs> hey, listen, I mean, you know, but I've I've gone through that with you. I've gone through, you know, uh, I I I took the I took the long course with you, but you know, um, a lot of that was just basically me just sort of like reworking a lot of the, the things that I've had in my head, right? Like just like, oh, okay, cool. Well, that, I wasn't doing that, you know. Um, uh, there there were there was a time where. 
you know, I thought I was doing something just perfect, right? And then you go, no, try it this way instead, and all, and I got better results. Mm. Um, and you know, like, listen, you know, I, I've also done things well, and you've and you've acknowledged that, right? Um, so it's it, it's really about like it's like okay, cool, the things that you're good at, keep doing that, you know what I mean? And the things that you don't, like, okay, like let's rework those, let's retool them a little bit, you know? And it was never about doing things the way you wanted them to do you wanted me to do them it was mm -hmm. about finding the best way for me to do it right. um and and that's what's really right you know um uh, that that's the value that's the that that that's what worked for me and uh, you know and not for nothing but um it's it's been an integral part of my life like i i've had a lot of success in what i've been doing uh, mostly yeah. because I decided to be open minded listen to the people that 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 have had experience doing things and and just uh just keeping that open mind just really uh allows you to grow as a person uh, emotionally dude you know, you've kicked uh, ass otherwise. in your life man when when you got over that 2004 hump and you really just decided i, I gotta build a bit uh, a better picture for my life um and that's not my story to tell obviously but all i can say that it was an honor to be part of that to contribute to it in any way, I shape or form. Yeah. And, and watching you over the last 20 years has been spectacular. Like you, you do some wild <laughs> Like I know you don't itemize it in your head very often because it's your life and you're just doing the do. Yeah. But man, you've done some wild shit, man. How many houses have you bought? Uh, one, two, uh, almost four, uh, three <laughs> in total. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, one fell through. And you're, and you're 43. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, the thing is that, and I've also had, and I've also taken L's. Things haven't always been, uh, of course, we you know, all amazing have. for me. That's not the point. But, but this is the point. The point is that, like, I'm very happy with my life. And listen, and I've, I've, on this show, I've told you, I've told you things that are personal about my life that haven't gone very great as of recent right but my life is fantastic you know like i'm separated with my wife but i am grateful that i'm that 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 she still has me in a loving capacity we get along fantastically i'd say that m m our relationship is better than it's ever been beautiful right and the only thing that's like missing from it is the you know the closeness the intimacy but aside, but I mean, you know, like we still get together and it's a big hug and a kiss and how are you? We talk more, we engage more. And quite honestly, that's the better part of the relationship. And that was the part of the relationship that I, I neglected, right? Because you get comfortable. And, and a mm. lot of the problems that I've had in my life is about me being comfortable. Everything with work, everything with my finances, things like that. You get comfortable and you decide that, oh, this is where I'm a rest right here. Um, hey man, Cardi B told you don't get comfortable. Yeah, right? you know what I mean, and that's what and that's what it's about. You know, it, I'm not saying that there isn't a point in your life where you can get comfortable because really life is about you know like loving it, enjoying it, and doing what you can. But when when things aren't uh, optimal in your life and you're comfortable then you're not doing anything to progress and make those better right and so to me like that I, comfort I, comes at a price and usually ex it's your emotional well-being exactly and so now it's a it's a situation where it's just like okay cool the i'm 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 trying to get that perspective you know, change that perspective and and really uh take a look at myself and fix the things that i've neglected fix the things that you know are are, are improving me um, just so that, you know, when I look back, uh, uh, you know, in a few years from now, I'm going, man, I did all the things that I needed to do and I'm, I'm, I'm happy now and things are moving in the right direction. So, um, that's, uh, that's all I want, you know, and let the chips fall where they may. And, yeah. you know, yeah, I remember, um, uh, a, a, f a fun sale that you and I went, went on and it's, a, it, it can be a long story, but I'll make it very short. It was at the end because I, I did something that you didn't see coming, which I, I left the guy with a form so that we could go around the block to a bodega to get something cold to drink because it was hot out that night. Yeah. And you were like, you were like, you club that dude like a baby seal. Yeah. <laughs>
And of course, what that means in sales yeah. is that the guy never stood a chance yeah. as far as telling me no. Right, yeah. He just couldn't. <laughs> it was, it was, I was, yeah, I was a gasp. <laughs> like, it was crazy. I just couldn't believe it because it was just a thing where, like, you know, I was still young at the time and I'm looking at, uh, and, I'm, and I look at this dude walking in, like, you know, like, there was, like, big energy just coming into this door and it was just like oh man he's a, he, you know this guy's like yeah. just shooing shooing him off almost immediately and nope yeah let me let me let me talk to you for a minute so it was it was yeah. uh it was a sight to see well at that point i was 17 years into the game so yeah uh, it's you know it, it it shows if you're if you're constantly learning and trying to improve it, it definitely shows yeah yeah absolutely i remember that one time where you know somebody was like oh you know what's your rates and you immediately jump to something like uh you know it's like hey i need a i need a i need a room uh, oh i know i remember the story yeah uh, again i'll tell this one very quickly yeah. and then we'll wrap it up um it was a tile store on yeah. fifth avenue and 31st street and i had heard that question five thousand fucking times at that point and i was real sick of it um so he asked me how much are your rates and i said i can't just do a blind quote he says well if you can't tell me how much your rates are then i can't do business with you and i looked around and i said how much is it to tile my place and he went well uh how big is your place i'm like well if you can't give me a blind quote and tell me how much it would be why would i work with you right yeah <laughs> and at least that cracked the door to get me into a conversation you know and that right. was the first time i had ever done that yeah because i was just sick of that shit. Like, yeah. why do people think you can blind quote them nobody can blind quote right but but everyone wants you to do it it's yeah. annoying right yeah anyway and, yeah it was uh it was a sight to behold thank you very much thank you yeah so were you on Sunday when we had dinner? That's why I hugged you for 37 minutes straight and grasped your buttocks tightly. <laughs> While I ashed my cigar on your, on your laurels. <laughs> so ridiculous. Oh, Lord. So anyway, bro, um, this was fun. It's good stuff walking down memory lane with my buddy yeah man it's good stuff man this is uh take this... my hand <laughs> <laughs> oh man if, if anybody knows what that's from please leave it in the comments <laughs> yeah that's great we do a lot of quotes from films it's good all right yeah that's it for this installment thank you all for joining us this has been the persistent rumor and we have been spectacular <laughs> indeed <laughs> hey thanks everybody for watching so what do you get when you support the persistent rumor on patreon you get early access to every episode all right you get to see it first exclusive content there is stuff that we're going to put on patreon that does not exist anywhere else all right so you get to have that random shout outs to our supporters free coaching with you know me chocolate yoda yours truly all right one-on-one -on -one coaching with me free of charge also airtime all right you are going to get to be part of the podcast all right so all of that starting at five dollars a month come on all of this good stuff come on go get you some all right uh, thanks again for watching and we'll talk to you soon.